Had gone on break for lunch. It is now getting close to 1.30. Mr. Yarn, you ready to resume your side of the case? Oh, Your Honor, give me just one moment. Uh, I believe we spoke on Mr. Douglas being here. He's still not local, I assume. I'm sorry, Kevin Douglas? Yes. All right, he was not here this morning. Have you subpoenaed Kevin Douglas? No, I did. Oh, yeah, we took that up. Never mind, I apologize. Okay, I thought we'd um, gone through that. McMahon, Your Honor. And is the state ready to proceed also? Yes, Your Honor. All right, if we could get witness Jake McMahon lined up to be called as the next witness and have the jury brought in. Thank you. Resume their positions in the jury box, soldiers being present. We left off with Mr. Yon presenting evidence. And Mr. Yon, who's your next witness? Uh, Mr. Jake McMahon. All right, Jake McMahon could come forward to the deputy clerk. She will swear you in. I do solemnly swear testimony you may give, and the cause now pending before this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. I do. I'll see it over to my right in the witness stand, please. And Mr. John, when you're ready with your questions. Yes, sir. Uh, you go by deputy or investigator? Sergeant. Sergeant. Sergeant McMahon. Uh, Sergeant McMahon, uh, on 11-9, of 21, there was alleged to be an incident of home invasion among vehicular hijacking and some other counts, I believe. Uh, you uh, were present this night, correct? Yes. And uh, do you remember the turn of events that happened that night as far as you being called? Yes. And uh, could you tell us who you were called by? I was initially notified by Chief Deputy Sam Smith. And uh, he asked you to proceed to the scene? Yes, he did. And uh, once you proceeded to the scene, do you remember what time it may have been? I arrived to the scene at 6.36 p.m. And uh, upon arriving to the scene, what did you do? I approached the residents and made contact with the deputies that were on scene. And uh, them deputies would have been... Sergeant Joe Lohmeyer and Deputy Bowden. And uh, in reference to where, in reference to making contact with them, you made contact with them where at, at the residence? 
I walked through the garage, um, which had the overhead door open, and then I walked through an open door leading into um, like an entryway of the residence, and that's where they were standing. Um, also present was Sheriff Rich Wagner. Rich Wagner, okay. Uh, I understand this may be outside of your knowledge, but do you know why Sheriff Rich Wagner was there? Because we had a serious call for service that he responded to. All right, and uh, he was on duty that night? Yes. Um, you were briefed by Sergeant Lohmeyer, or Mr. Lohmeyer, um, Miss Bowden, and Sheriff Wagner, correct? Correct. Um, and what briefing did they give you? I believe I primarily talked to Sheriff Wagner and he gave me an overview of what Christine um, had reported occurred that evening. Do you know who the first deputy was to arrive or who the first officer was? I believe it was Deputy Bowden. It, it could have been Sergeant Lohmeyer. I know they arrived within minutes of one another. And then obviously Sheriff, correct? Correct. Um, after conferring with them, what did you do? After getting the general information, um, I went out to my vehicle and started making phone calls to get investigators to the scene. And uh, you obviously called on investigators. <laughs> Could you relay what their names were? I called Investigator Miller, Investigator Shoney, and Investigator Summers. And you said you were contacted by Chief Deputy Smith? Yes. And he was not on scene? Not when I arrived, no. Uh, did he arrive at a later time while you were there? Or? I, I don't recall if he was on scene. If he was, it was very brief. And uh, obviously you stepped inside the, the entrance to the, the home, if you may, uh, as you just stated. What did you observe upon entering the home? Yes, yeah, so I stepped from the garage into the entryway. <clears throat> it's where the deputies were at. I could see... Christine on the floor, um, uh, extremely upset, crying, um, telling the story about what, what happened. And, and uh, were you there when deputies helped her up? I, I would have been on scene. I was not in the home when that happened. You are aware, though, that deputies did end up helping her to a, a couch, correct? I'm not. Um, after inquiring with investigators for them to come to the scene, what did you then proceed to do? After calling my investigators, um, I made contact with the Illinois State Police and requested that they send a crime scene technician to the scene. Um, I spoke to numerous deputies and coordinated um, a search of the area. And uh, while entering the scene, or when you entered the scene right off, I would say a foyer, would that be correct, a foyer or entryway? Yes. Uh, you stepped in to the open floor plan. How far would you determine you stepped into it? I don't believe I stepped into the open area because there were, there were other deputies there. I just was able to peek my head around the corner see what was occurring, then I retreated out of the house. And uh, you obviously could see the open floor plan there in the living room, correct? Correct. Could you see the stove or kitchen sink? I could see the kitchen. I don't remember if I could see the stove or the sink specifically. Um, I'm going to pull up an image for you. It would be one moment. Image six, or image 13 first, I apologize. Image 13 and then I will pull up image six. Is there an objection? The exhibit 13? Yes, exhibit number 13. That's fine. 
uh, is that that's exhibit or excuse me exhibit 13 right there uh, sergeant McMahon um, you stated that you did not step into there you could lean around correct you could lean around the door frame excuse me the, the door frame right here and you did not step across the threshold I don't recall if I did. I, I don't believe that I stepped through that threshold. It, it is possible, but I do remember leaning around that corner to see into the house. Um, in your in your report, you state that you could, upon entering, you stood in the entryway to the residence and you observed a knife on the floor between the living room and the kitchen, as well as numerous drawers in the kitchen that appeared to be open, correct? Yes. And there were, you, upon leaning into that entryway, you could see numerous drawers that were opened, obviously. Correct. Um, Deputy McMahon, I'm gonna to step to number six, excuse me. Deputy McMahon, uh, I know that this kitchen is offset from the entrance doorway. It's set back further. If I were to <coughs> step in the entrance here and lean around, the kitchen sits back that way, if you may. It sits back approximately almost maybe as far as that door there. Um, I'm going to zoom in here for a moment and if you see right here where the hand is waving, there's a cabinet area. And then back here to the left, there's a chair. Right there left to that chair is a wall that sits out further than this chair is back. And you stated in your, in your report that you was able to observe a knife, which is here on the floor and several drawers and cabinets that were open, correct? Yes. Uh, Deputy McMahon, uh, when, when there's a scene and it's a criminal scene such as this, or any scene, is it appropriate for persons to close, open, touch, um, enter a scene, walk around? Um, Compound question, Your Honor, objection. Is it, uh, is it appropriate for people to enter a scene and walk through that scene? Objection, Your Honor. Compound question. Is it appropriate for people to enter that scene? By people, who do you mean? Well, let's start with law enforcement. Is it appropriate for law enforcement to enter that scene? Yes. Is it appropriate for a numerous amounts of law enforcement to enter a scene? I believe that would depend on the scene. But if there's no vital threat there, then several officers wouldn't enter the scene and, and go in and out, correct? Again, that, that would depend on the scene. Okay, scenes such as this, this is a very, and, and I will concede myself, this is a very heinous crime. It's sickening. Would you agree? Uh, certainly. Uh, relevance to the degree of the crime. Stained. Your Honor, uh, thank you. Uh, it's a very violent crime. True. Yes. And when you have a violent crime such as this, persons do not are not supposed to enter the scene except for law enforcement. True. Generally speaking, we would try to limit who and, enters the scene. And normally, you would tape tape it off. That again would depend on the scene. Um, in reference to, say, any normal homicide or rape where you're looking for DNA, um, would you expect to let other individuals into the home, citizens? Not generally. And uh, when you arrived on the home, I want to ask you to clarify something for me. When you arrived at the home, you stated Sheriff Lohmeyer, Sheriff Wagner, Mr. Lohmeyer, and Rep. Deputy Bowden, correct? 
Yes. And there were no children of the declarant on the scene, correct? I don't recall specifically if the children arrived, uh, if they were, they were already present when I arrived or if it was shortly thereafter, but I know it was about the same time that everyone was showing up. But they, at, the, at some point in time, they were in the scene? Yes. And uh, that was more than one? Yes, there were numerous family members. I don't recall who they were. And they were inside the home? I know that I had made contact with family members outside of the home um, and advised them that they needed to stay at the end of the driveway. Um, I want to touch base on people. I obviously were already there, but I want to touch base on people entering a scene. Um, a scene such as this generally, as you stated, they do not allow people into a scene. Correct? Correct. And we already know there were several individuals in the scene. Uh, you're obviously aware. Um, if I could, lights again. Mr. Uh, Sergeant McMahon, there are approximately, to my count in the picture, over 20 cabinets and drawers. Well over 20. I'm not going to lay here, stay here and count them out, but there are over 20. I can estimate it as I once built cabinets. Um, in all these cabinets, Sergeant McMahon, how many do you see open in the present area of the kitchen? Well, there's certainly the one that's clearly open on the right-hand right side. Right here. I can't tell if the one directly to the left of that is partially open or not. It does appear, I will concede, it does appear to be partially open. And then also the corner cabinet um, appears that it might be partially ajar. And that would be this one here. The lower, the lower corner to the left of it looks like the stove. Oh, that is a, what's called Lazy Susan, uh, Deputy McMahon, Sergeant McMahon. Uh, it, it would appear to be open because it needs a, much wider gap to spin on its axis. Um, it could appear to you, correct, that it'd be open? But yes. Probably not, maybe. I'm interpreting the photo as you asked. And if I slide the picture over here to this set of cabinets and display, well, display cabinets and drawers, does it appear that any, what you, from what you can see, that any cabinets are open, anything gone through? And I, I can switch to another picture in a moment, but does it appear that any drawers and cabinets are open? From what I can see right now, it does not, but I don't have the clearest picture of that. Okay, I, I will give, give me one moment, and I will proceed to image 14 that is of the same cabinets with a light, lit view directly in front of the cabinets. Sergeant McMahon, does any of these top display cabinets appear to be open? They do not. And down here on the bottom, do any of these cabinets and drawers appear to be open? Perhaps the bottom left Perhaps, uh, but if, if so, very minimally. Yeah. Um, so in concluding and, and, and observing these pictures, there were not numerous drawers and cabinets open, were there? I believe there were. You believe there were. These are crime scene pictures here, um, six. 14 and 13, I believe it was. These are crime scene pictures. That would entail, and, and they show that there are not numerous drawers open. Not at all. Not any cabinets, numerous drawers. Judge, at this point, I'm going to object to leading. This is a direct examination. Sustain, Mr. Young, if you would like to ask questions. When one When a crime happens 
and a scene like this is taken into an account. And there are said to be several drawers and cabinets open. And a CSI, crime scene services technician, investigator, arrives at a later time. When them cabinets are closed or dealt with or handled in between time, would that be considered spoliation of a crime scene? I don't know what that means. Spoliation. Spoliation is essentially tampering with, altering, um, changing, contaminating a crime scene. Okay, could you repeat the question? When a crime scene is alleged to have happened such as this, where a rape was alleged to have taken place, where violent acts were taking place, where DNA could have been left, where a CSI is needed, you've already, observed, you've already accounted for numerous drawers and cabinets being open. You've accounted for a knife that's set way back. Objection, Your Honor, compound question. Sustained. When one alters a scene, would Objection, that be? Your Honor, assumes facts are not in evidence. There's been no evidence that anyone has altered a scene. There's Sustained. evidence right here, Your Honor. Uh, Objection sustained. Ask your next question. In your determination from your professional opinion, what is contaminating a scene? That would be, I, I suppose, the introduction of some sort of evidence or, or the removal of some kind of evidence that wasn't initially there? Wasn't initially there, such as <coughs> when you arrived, numerous drawers and cabinets were open. But now it's not there. Jackson, Your Honor, leading, sustained. Your Honor, um, apologize. And uh, when you arrived, were you, how long were you there? I was initially there from 6.36 p.m. until I believe um, 11.30 or so. So you were there for approximately four, four or five hours? Correct. Um, Sergeant McMahon, do you recall whether declarant was bleeding? Declarant CL? No. And did you observe any blood anywhere, what appeared to be blood? No. And uh, throughout your time there, did you ever see the declarant sitting on a couch? No. And you were obviously back and forth throughout the whole scene, securing and making sure everything was done right as sergeant on the scene, correct? I remained outside. You I did, did not go back in the residence after my initial contact. Okay, uh, and, okay so let me re-ask uh, your initial contact. How long do you think you were in the scene, in the home? I was in the home, I would say less than a minute, and then I went to the garage for right. several minutes. And, and what did you observe out in the garage? Um, Mr. Loman's truck was parked in the garage and, um, or Mr. Schmidt's rather, and there was a oddly placed pile of belongings in the parking spot nearest the entry door to the home. If you would give me one moment. Uh, is there a reason that Mr. Schmidt's truck would be moved from that garage if it was already in the scene? Yes. And could you relay that? He left to go to the hospital. And uh, approximately what time do you believe they left to go to the hospital? I, I really don't know. Was it hours after you were there? No, I, I would say probably within half hour to 45 minutes of my arrival. And you arrived at 6.36, so place us at about 7.15 potentially. 
somewhere in there. I really don't remember when they left. Um. Sergeant Mann, uh, did you observe CL leave out of the residence? Not that I recall. You were in the garage, correct? No. You just stated you were in the garage, Sarge. So I far, you've been completely honest. But Objection, Your Honor. Argumentative. Sustained, if you can ask the question. Um, you did not observe CL leave. I don't recall seeing her leave. And uh, do you recall who she left with? I know it was family members. I don't know who exactly she was with. You stated just moments ago that she had, the truck had to be moved because she had to leave for the hospital. Objection, no. He said Tim left for the hospital. Sustained. Is that accurate? That Tim left for the hospital, yes, that is accurate. And you do remember him leaving? I don't specifically remember the details of him leaving, no. Um, throughout the rest of your night there at the scene, what did you do? Objection, Your Honor, calls for a narrative answer. A narrative. You could focus the question a little more. What was the procedure you took? I did a canvas of the property. I uh, walked up and down the driveway, um, canvassed the outbuildings, looking for anything that could help us identify the suspects in this. Also coordinated with other law enforcement agencies, as well as deputies from our office, um, and awaited the Illinois State Police to arrive. And uh, can you explain what an ice burn is? I-S-P-E-R-N? It's burn. It's the Illinois State Police Emergency Radio Network. And uh, there was a Isburn placed, and in your report it says, I, I, I advise dispatch to send out an, a second Isburn alert. Can you relay what sending out an Isburn relay, relates to? Sure. So the Illinois State Police Emergency Radio Network is a statewide radio network that um, when broadcasted over all law enforcement in the entire state can hear. So I put out the vehicle and suspect information as we knew at that time. And uh, they also have the ability to relay Isburns to other jurisdictions such as maybe Hannibal, Missouri. I'm, I'm really not sure how that works with uh, going across state lines. I, I don't know if they can hear our Isburn or if they relay it. I, I have no idea. They can relay it though. Via sure, they could call them or whatever they might do. And uh, that was the second ice burn you speak of here. Uh, do you recall these two ice burns being placed? Like being placed over the radio? Yes. What times around about? I don't recall the exact times. I know the first one was shortly after we um, determined what the vehicle make, model, and license plate was. The second one was after we identified who had stolen the vehicle. And uh, you say you identified who they stole but you were not for sure at that time, correct? It was our suspect information. And uh, and uh, in in sending this is burn out, you um, you would request one be put and then you would hear it at a later time, correct? Yes, I would contact my dispatch center and they would then send out the s -burn. So it's, it's possible that they have to do a little bit of computer work and then they place it over the radio waves, true? I'm really not sure how that side of an s -burn works. Oh. Um, you stated in your record here that uh, other deputies left the scene in an attempt to check the area in Quincy and Adams County for this stolen Toyota Avalon, correct? Yes. 
and you did not go out to look? No. Um, you, you overheard radio while you were searching, you stated in here that you overheard radio traffic from the Adams County Dispatch Center who advised that Hannibal Police Department had located the stolen Toyota Avalon in Hannibal and attempted a traffic stop with this vehicle. Do you remember the approximate time that was? Approximately, I believe probably between 8 and 9 p.m. I could be off a little, but it, it was somewhere in that realm. Yes, uh, so that's about two hours after vehicle information was relayed to, to the dispatch center. I don't know when the initial is burn went out. And uh, have, have you ever had a chance to review the 911 CFS report? Yes. And uh, are you familiar with that? Somewhat. Um, Your Honor, I'd like to present the CFS report to the deputy, if I could. You need the bailiff to take an exhibit to the witness? And uh, I will mark it. I have it on digital, Your Honor. I will mark it. Exhibit 86. And it is five pages in length. <clears throat> it is the... Let's ask the witness to identify what it is. Once he gets it. We're just going to make sure that the 86 is legible on the exhibit number. Uh, so the bailiff would take the defendant's exhibit 86 to the witness. The record will reflect that has now occurred. Once you've identified that, would you please let me know? <clears throat> Tell me, uh, Your Honor, I, I, I'd like to publish this to the jury, if I may. Well, the witness has reviewed it. You'll need to identify for the record what it is by your questioning him, and then we can proceed. To I apologize, you correct. Um, and that is a CFS report, which is also known as a 911 report, correct? I know it as a dispatch ticket, dispatch but I believe ticket. CFS, yes, that would be the Case. same thing. File summary or something, another, but a dispatch ticket. Correct. Um, and what does a dispatch ticket include? It's got the initial call time, the phone number that called, who called, what the report is, uh, any information that's related to the 911 call taker. <clears throat> it's also got various notes from law enforcement, uh, whether that be um, something that, some pertinent information that the dispatch would put on the ticket. Um, it would also have arrival and departure times of deputies that were on scene, um, license plates, things of that nature. And uh, you said pertinent inf information that deputies would place forth. That would be notes such as procedure they took or calls that they sent out via radio or a request? That, that could potentially be something on there, yeah. Such as placing an ISPR. Correct. And uh, if you look on there... Could you tell me where there's an ISPERN at, the first ISPERN, if possible?
I don't see anything that specifically notes the first disc burn. That, however, there are some. Um, there is a, a portion that I believe would likely be the S burn, but it does not say S burn. And uh, Your Honor, I'd like to publish this in the jury. Okay. No objection. It can be published for the jury. And uh, this right here would be page one, as you can see. Uh, excuse me. Uh, make this clear one moment. That would be page one there, correct? Of the SBURN, you, or the CFS report you hold in your hand? Your Honor, again, I would object at that point. This is a portion of page one. We're obviously not looking at the full page. I'm going to go down the page. All right, I'll sustain the objection. And uh, these right here are the case notes, correct? Yes. And you see that there's the time to the left with the dial operator at the dispatch who took the calls or the request. And then you have 609 here that states, Mel came and attacked his wife and broke into the house and stole the car, correct? Yes, that's what it reads. And if you go on down, do you see anything that's considered an ice burn? Again, the first ice burn I do not see on there specifically. And if I continue to go down, I'm at 848.09, and that is Marion County, <coughs> excuse me, Marion County called at 2006 and advised that Hannibal PD attempted to stop the vehicle on Hannibal and it fled eastbound on the bridge into Pike County. That would be at 848, correct? Yes. And if you go on to page two, you will see further information that people advise they saw suspects at a gas station. It's gonna object, it doesn't say suspects. It says, right. said they have a witness from the gas station saying it was Karen Blackledge and Bradley Young. That's what the exhibit says. It does, it does say that. I'll sustain the objection. And that is approximately two, two and a half to three hours later, true? Yes. And then you have the third one down. It's 11921 of 2000, 11 9 of 2021 at 908 and 42 seconds PM. And that is that S6 required another S burn. True? Yes. And then we have obviously the rest, and this is just information on people included and the vehicle making number. And then you have the arrival times of units. And uh, I believe what we're seeing here is the time of. Objection, Your Honor, is there a question? Yes, to witness the question. In reference to S1, there, unit S1, Deputy McMahon. Um, Status available. It says 6.03.25 p.m., correct? Objection, Your Honor, that's not what it says. For the time, it states. Objection sustained. I'm going to rephrase the question and ask the witness if he knows what it says, maybe. Do you know what it says there under units S1? It says unit S1, status is available. And the time is 6.03 and 25 seconds a.m. And uh, could you relay why that may say a.m.? It's probably when he went on duty that day. Exactly. That's what I assume. Right. Thank you. And uh, you go on further 
And we're still at S1 here on page four. Objection, Your Honor. It actually says unit S11 on the left side of the document. And if we go from page three to the bottom of page three, it starts at units S1. And then you go to page four. And it continues with S1. Would that be a correct assumption? I mean, it, it's probably easier to see on your paper there, correct? Yes, I believe the top of the page you're on now is a continuation from S1. And uh, you see that S1 was dispatched at what time? Could you read that off for us? 62324 p.m. And obviously arrived, as you stated, a little bit before you at 633 correct correct and uh sergeant man what badge number are you six uh, my main my main reason for this was to identify ice burn so i'm not going to go any further um Isburn, if I may, uh, Your Honor, I, we we see no record of an Isburn. For, Objection, Your Honor. Is there a question? Yeah, no, you don't need to ask this witness. Was there a record for an Isburn? Yes, sir. And was that a second Isburn? There's a record of an Isburn indicating that I requested the Isburn at 9.08 p.m. Um. Can you shed some light on that maybe? Sure. So it states 11 9 of 2021 at 9 08 p.m. Sam 6, which is me, request another ISPURN suspect in vehicle. PC, which stands for probable cause, for a stop and hold for aggravated kidnap or correction, aggravated fleeing, kidnapping, home invasion, sexual assault. They are in the vehicle. And at the top right of the page one, uh, could you read that box off to us? The top right, which box? The top right of the first page. It says CFS number. Yes, CFS number 110921-102. And that would be, the, what would the case number be in reference to? That's not necessarily a case number. That's a, from what I from what I know, that's a just a numbering system associated with the ticket. Um, Deputy or Sergeant McMahon, could you tell us why there no number one is burned placed on that document? No, I cannot. Um, after receiving the information that uh, defendants had traveled across the Illinois state line, what did you proceed to do being sergeant? Are you referring to when I found out the vehicle fled from Hannibal? Yes. Um, I relayed that information. I spoke to numerous sheriff's deputies and um, advised them to head south, head towards Pike County and try to find them. And uh, Deputy Summer was in contact with the Hannibal Police Department and uh, gathered information concerning this issue with Hannibal Police Department. Um, do you have any knowledge as to that? I know that he spoke to them in regards to the fleeing. And that's the limited amount you have. I, I can't tell you the conversations that he had. Thank you. Um, um, they talk, you, know, you, you speak on contacting Quincy Police Department and you spoke to a Sergeant Highland uh, that advised a female identified as Karen Blackledge was suspected in a vehicle theft, correct? That's correct. And that was earlier on in the day, hours before maybe? I don't know the exact time, but it was on November 9th, 2021. 
And uh, upon meeting with uh, deputy, or excuse me, I apologize, CSI field, she arrived to the scene approximately nine o'clock. What did you, what procedure did you take? Did you have any interaction with her? I did. And what, what interaction was that? I briefed her on the case, um, a general overview of the scene as I knew it, um, and uh, really just showed her, you know, what we were dealing with. So you, you entered the home then? I did not. And uh, the following day, you spoke with Summers, who had been in contact with the United States Marshals Task, Task Force Service. Um, did you have any interaction with that? I did. And are you part of the U.S. Marshal Service? I'm not now, but I was then assigned to the United States Marshal Service and Fugitive Task Force. And uh, I don't have much more, McMahon. Uh, if Give me one moment. Oh, uh, you you uh, learned that they had been the suspects, Karen D. Blackledge and myself, Bradley on were apprehended in Springfield. True. True. And you traveled to Springfield. Yes. And uh, when you traveled to Springfield, what did you do upon arrival? I went to the address. I believe it's 1900 block of East Cornell. I met with the Marshal Service personnel, as well as uh, numerous Springfield PD detectives. And, uh, and were there anything, was there anything that was, how do I say it, uh, anything irregular about that scene in the vicinity of the area? Yes. Could you relay that? I'm a, I would assume the deceased male in the vehicle. Um, well, since you point that out, uh, what was the issue with that deceased male? Of other than being deceased? I mean that he was, he had been, well, he was dead. I'd Shot, yeah. Uh, and that was in very close proximity to where myself and Karen Blackledge were found, correct? That's correct. And uh, very big coincidence, would you agree? Objection, Your Honor. This witness doesn't know if it was a coincidence or not. You you do you do know that it had nothing to do with the defendant. Correct? Objection, Your Honor. This witness doesn't know if it had anything to do with the defendant or not. How do you know, Mr. Jones? You won't even let the man answer. Well, Everybody I'm knows going that this time. Sustain the objection, Mr. Yon. I don't know what the deceased male located in her vehicle nearby has to do with this case. You're not charged with a murder, and so. And that's what I'm getting at. Um, what else did you notice at the scene of arrest? I saw that the uh, the backyard of the residence had been taped off. Uh, it, there were, again, numerous Springfield police officers on scene. Uh, I saw a camper in the backyard, um, various outbuildings. Uh, I didn't spend a great deal of time observing the scene at that point. And, uh, you, excuse me, could you repeat that last statement? You didn't... I didn't spend a great deal of time examining the scene at that time. Uh, you didn't do a walkthrough? No. And uh, who did you go, who did you ride to Springfield with? I believe I rode with Investigator Summers, but I, I, I believe I rode with Possibly him. Possibly Shoney? Possibly. I know four of us went, we took two vehicles. I don't exactly remember who rode with who. And uh, you state that you didn't get to enter the scene you just observed from outside the tape, true? Correct. And uh, you did, what did you observe from outside the scene? A camper behind the residence, a couple of like garden shed outbuilding type things. Uh, I believe there was maybe some luggage. I, I don't recall exactly what I could see from outside the tape versus once we later went onto the property. I, I don't remember what exactly I could see. And was that from, that was obviously from the back of the residence, correct? The from alley. the alley in the rear, yes. And uh, you did you observe a chair at that time? Again, I, I, I 
I am familiar with the chair. I don't remember if I saw that from the alley or when we went onto the property. The second time. Correct. And uh, I'd like to ask you, but I, I know the arrest, uh, you filed for a warrant, or not you yourself, but other investigators with you filed for a warrant. And uh, you went back to the scene, true? That's correct. And you then proceeded to search at approximately 7.30, 8.30, somewhere along those lines? I don't remember the exact time. I know it was uh, dark out. And uh, what did you find at that scene in relation to right outside the camper? A purse on a metal chair. And what was included in that purse? It's a large amount of U.S. currency, a Ziploc bag full of uh, assorted jewelry, there were checks from American Builder Supply with Tina's name written on them, um, as well as uh, a voter registration card with Tina's name and address. And that's, that's it, correct? There may have been other things. I, I, would, I don't remember specifically everything that was in there. Uh, after that, what did you proceed to do? after the search had concluded? After we were finished with the search warrant, I went, uh, traveled back to the Springfield Police Department um, and I observed um, via TV monitor as deputies conducted numerous interviews. Are you aware of any items that were found worn on a person's body, such as myself? I'm familiar with the property that we were provided uh, by the Springfield Police Department. I, I don't know if you were wearing those items, but I am familiar with your property that was given to us. And what, uh, approximately what time was that given to you? When was that given to you? Was it after the interviews or? Yes, it was shortly before we left. I, I couldn't tell you, I, it was very late at night. And uh, do you remember a Disney card? I do remember a Disney card. I don't remember if that was during the search warrant or in your property, but I do recall seeing a Disney credit or debit card. That's all I have, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Sergeant McMahon. Mr. Cross? Yes. Uh, Sergeant McMahon, do you still have Exhibit 86 in front of you? I do. And at the top of that exhibit, um, I won't put it on the screen. That's fine. It says uh, Quincy Adams County 911 call for service report, doesn't it? Yes. That means there was a 911 call, doesn't it? Correct. Specifically in this case, according to the 911 report, there was a 911 call on November 9th, 2021 at 6.09 and 15 seconds p.m. Is that correct? That's correct. And it says the complainant, the person who made the call, was Tim Schmidt, doesn't it? Yes. And it gives a phone number, 440-4310, uh, as the cell phone that made that call, doesn't it? That's correct. Let's go through that 911 call report since it's been introduced into evidence. At 6.09 and 49 seconds, the 911 report says, male came and attacked his wife, broke into the house, and stole the car. Did I read that correctly? That is correct. At 6.10 and 4 seconds, it said it just recently happened within the last half hour. Did I read that correctly? Correct. At 6.10 and 27 seconds, it says wife is really upset, declined AMB, declined ambulance, correct? That's correct. At 6.11 and 1 seconds, it says he raped her, white male with black female. Did I read that correctly? Correct. At 6, 11, and 9 seconds, it says unknown which direction, correct? Correct. And five seconds after that, he was going to kill her with a knife. Correct. correct. Yes. And a few seconds after that, two, oh, uh, 2018 white Toyota Avalon is what they stole. Is that correct? That's correct. Registered REG to American Builder Supply. Did I read that correct? 
Correct. Female had wild pants that were shorter than her ankles. Male had on jeans and a hat. Is that correct? Correct. That point, we see S6 request ISB crime scene tech. They were contacted. You are S6. Is that right? That's right. It then says white male, red beard, short black female, wanted for questioning, ag, sex assault, and residential burglary. Is that correct? Correct. Then at 8.48 and 9 seconds p.m., Marion County called at 8.06 and advised that Hannibal PD attempted to stop the vehicle in Hannibal. It fled eastbound on the bridge into Pike County, passing the whole exit at approximately 8.06. Pike County was also advised. Is that correct? That's correct. If there had not been an ice burn before 8.06, Hannibal PD would not have been looking for that Toyota Avalon, would they? No, I don't believe so. Then at 8.59, it says on the next page, Hannibal PD, Sergeant Wilk called over, said they have a witness from the gas station saying it was Karen Blackledge and Bradley Yon. We'll have video footage tomorrow morning. Is that correct? That's correct. That's all the questions I have. Thank you, Sergeant. Can you redirect, Mr. Yon? Your Honor, uh, yes, I do. Um, are you aware of that HPD video? I've not seen it, but I I believe there might be video of some kind. Uh, Your Honor, I'd like to introduce Exhibit 80. That is a video from Hannibal Police Department that they acquired, if I could. Um, I do not have it to where Mr. Sergeant Mann can review it, however, it is from HPD that it was acquired throughout the deputies here. And uh, it has a major reference in concern of Isfern being placed. Mr. Jones? Objection. Okay. Foundation. Uh, the foundation is... Proper foundation. Excuse me. You'll need to lay the proper foundation for such... The foundation is, uh, Mr. Sergeant Mann here has stated that there was no ice burn placed, or that he could not, I'm sorry, he could not find an ice burn on that document, a first one. And Mr. Jones here has went to combat for him saying that there is an ice burn obviously placed. I would like to clear up the ice burn issue. That would be wonderful if you lay the proper foundation for the exhibit, then you'll be allowed to do that, but you'll have to lay the proper foundation. Your Honor, I don't have the witnesses familiar with it, so I can't present that evidence, right. but uh, that evidence has been given to me previously in discovery. And there's an objection by the state, and so again, without the proper foundation, the evidence cannot be, or exhibit cannot be admitted. Any other questions for this witness on redirect? No, thank you, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. All right. And can he be released from his witness subpoena if there is one? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Young? Yes, sir. All right. So you're free to go. And you may remain and watch the rest if you like, but you are released from your witness subpoena. for one hour perhaps we'll take a 10 minute recess at this point give the jurors a chance to stretch and use the facilities if they need to the record could reflect the jurors have all returned to the jury box and mr yon you were presenting your side of the case who will be your next witness uh deputy investigator miller all right we could have deputy investigator miller brought into the courtroom please
word to the deputy circuit clerk and raise your right hand. She'll swear you in. You do solemnly swear that the testimony you may give in the cause now pending before this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. I do. I see to my right in the witness stand. John, when you're ready with your questions. Yeah, Deputy Miller, uh, can you state your uh, credentials? I'm an investigator with the Adams County Sheriff's Office. And uh, your full name, please? Kelsey Miller. And uh, what about your badge number? CM17. And uh, we're obviously here on CF715, a criminal case for hijacking, kidnapping, among other things. Uh, that occurrence was alleged to have happened on November 9th of 21, correct? Correct. And uh, approximately what time do you recall that event taking place, or that occurrence happening? I got called at approximately 7 p.m. And uh, do, you, do you recall what time this uh, occurrence was supposed to have happened, the crime was supposed to be committed? We got the call to dispatch around approximately 10 after 6 p.m. And uh, you say you were called to respond to the scene. Who were you called by? Sergeant McMahon. And uh, Sergeant McMahon told you that you needed to come to the scene, correct? Correct. And, uh, excuse me. I want to ask you about investigations, how you're assigned investigations. Uh, how are you assigned an investigation? My sergeant assigns them. So it'd be safe to assume that this night when he called you there, he called you there and spoke to you and he assigned you this investigation, correct? Correct, as well as the other investigators. And and you're the lead, are you the lead investigator on this case? It's more of a team effort. There's not one single lead. Okay, all right. And, okay, in reference to that, would it be safe to assume that you have the most knowledge and have operated more with this case than anybody. I think we all have equal parts. And uh, you state you were called around seven. Um, could you relate the time that you got there? I would have to look at the dispatch ticket. I believe it was approximately 18 minutes after seven. Uh, 18 minutes after seven, it sounds about correct. And uh, who did you speak to upon arriving at 4300 Bottom Road? I spoke to uh, my sergeant, Sergeant McMahon, uh, Sergeant Lohmeyer, my partner, Investigator Shoney. I uh, believe the sheriff was there as well, the chief deputy Goodwin. Um, I know that Deputy Bowden was also there um, and uh, Inspector Summers. And uh, you did not speak to CL? I did not. Um. Did you gain entry into the home? I did not. What were the procedure? What was the procedure you took this night? I spoke to the other law enforcement on scene and learned about what they had at that time. Um, I spoke to Mr. Schmidt about some credit cards and trying to understand what had been stolen. Uh, we searched the area for anything of evidentiary value. And you. Obviously, you say you've not spoken to CL, but you're aware of her leaving for the hospital? Correct. And uh, approximately what time did she leave for the hospital? I don't know. Uh, after you were there, obviously, uh, correct? Correct. Um, was it a while, maybe? I'm yeah, not sure. sure. It's fine, Your Honor. I'll withdraw the objection. Um, and we, we can all estimate times, true? every human being as long as they know how to tell time true true could you give a brief estimate objection maybe 20 way. minutes 40 minutes objection your honor the witness has already testified she doesn't know how long it was after she got there well let's see if she can give an estimate so i'll overrule the objection i don't have an estimate i don't know and uh you state you in your supplemental report, you state you observed Timothy Schmidt 
uh, in the garage on the phone. Correct. And you went and spoke to him. I did. And uh, what did you and Timothy Schmidt speak about? I asked him uh, not. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. Sustained. Um, did Timothy Schmidt relay to you that? Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. Sustained. What other duties did you do or partake in while at 4300 Bottom Road? Everything I listed was pretty much it. And then you left the scene, correct? Correct. And um, what did you leave the scene for? I went back to our headquarters to begin facilitating a photo lineup. And uh, what, what brought on the photo lineup issue? Uh, is that normal procedure or? Yes, that is normal procedure. Talking about normal procedure, um, I'd like to ask you, in this instance, it's a violent crime, it's sexual assault, um, among other heinous crimes. What is the proper procedure in securing a crime scene in your occupation? We try to limit as many people into the crime scene as possible when we can. And uh, obviously on this night, it was Timothy Schmidt, CL, and then officers arrived, true? Correct. And are you aware of any other beings being in the residence? I am not. You're not aware of anybody other than law enforcement and Timothy Schmidt and CL? To my knowledge, that's correct. And, uh, you worked on preparing a lineup. Could you briefly explain, explain that process? I gathered the most recent booking <coughs> photographs of Bradley Yawn and Karen Blackledge, and I gave those to the Quincy Police Department for them to create a photo lineup because a photo lineup cannot be given by anybody who has knowledge of the case. And at that time, you'd stated that everybody had knowledge. Yeah. That was at approximately what time you arrived to, if you remember right, uh, that you arrived to the headquarters to do this? I don't know. I'd have to look at the dispatch ticket. And, uh, Your Honor, uh, could we present uh, 86? Excuse me. Uh, You're asking the bailiff to take your defendant's exhibit 86 to the witness? I believe so, yes. Uh, right. I don't have it, Your Honor. I think the clerk still has it. You have exhibit 86. Clerk has provided such to the bailiff who has now delivered it to the witness. I believe it's the en route time of 9.48 p.m. Yeah. that I would have left the scene to go to headquarters to begin starting the photo lineup. And approximately how long does it normally take to start a photo lineup and get one prepared and if you are able to find a, an officer to do such? It, it's totally dependent. It depends on who's available, uh, what they're doing. There's not an average time for that. But it couldn't be done in five or ten minutes. Again, there's not an average time. There's a lot of different factors that go into that. After putting this photo lineup together, uh, what did you then proceed to do? Uh, after the photo lineup was created, I went to Blessing Hospital. And further, if you may. I went to Blessing Hospital, spoke with Christine to tell her what would be happening, and then a Quincy police officer administered the photo lineup. And do you recall what Quincy police officer that was? Officer Dolbear. Dolbear, uh, okay. Uh. And uh, I read where you later on were given that photo lineup by officers. Correct. Uh, I believe by disc and documentation. Correct. Um, so you, you know of the photo lineup, you know what it contains, you've viewed it and read it and whatnot? Yes. Um, do you remember in either photo lineups 
specifically mine, do you ref do you remember if there was a positive or not negative identification? Objection, Your Honor. We call for hearsay. Sustained. You've read the, or you've listened to it and read it, correct? Correct. Uh, Your, Your Honor, I'd like to present the, excuse me, um, photo lineup. It is number 72 to Officer Kelsey Miller, if possible. I have that here on computer if she would review it or potentially she's already reviewed it. So I'd like to present that to her if possible. You're asking the bailiff to take something to the witness, Mr. Young? Unless we can just pull it up on the screen and. Your Honor, no, we were, it's not been admitted into evidence. There's not been a foundation laid and it's still hearsay. All right. So there's an objection we need to lay the foundation for such before it's published to the jury if the foundation is laid. I'll uh, retract that uh, request. Uh, there was no positive objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Sustained. Your Honor, it uh, would not be here. Objection, Your Honor. The court has ruled. It would be hearsay if it's based upon what someone told this witness, Mr. Young. What if it's what she observed, Your Honor, and what she knows? She just said she didn't observe the photo lineup taking place at the hospital. It was conducted by a QPD uh, dull bear. Your Honor, she uh, stated she reviewed it after that. And again, that would be hearsay and the court is sustaining the objection on that basis. Yes, sir. Um, in reference to photo lineups, and I'm just talking in general, um, in reference to photo lineups, officers of the law and other citizens, they're not supposed to help an individual identify a subject or give clues as to who one is, true? Correct. And uh, that would essentially be against the law, would it? That would be against statute and laws governing photo lineups, correct? That's just not something that we do. And um, You do remember this photo lineup being done on 11-9-21 at Blessing? I believe it was on 11-9, late on 11-9 or early on 11-10. You believe or you know? I believe it's in that range. And you stated previously that you were part of organizing this lineup? Yes. Approximately how later did you retrieve the information from the photo lineup? I believe the disc was given to me early morning on the 10th. So early a.m. hours, nighttime a.m. hours, like midnight through 6 p.m. or later than that? The early morning hours of the 10th. When you arrived at the hospital, how did CL appear? She was upset. Did she appear to be, from your perspective, did she appear to be physically abused? Yes. And uh, the next day you, and I do not want to dwell off into this, but uh, the next day you did an interview with CL, correct? I did. And that was approximately 12.02 p.m.? It was in the afternoon. 
And um, where did you take that interview at? At her daughter's hair salon. Uh, I'll, I'll come back to the interview in a bit. Uh, obviously, in this situation, there was a sex assault kit done, true? Correct. And uh, that sex assault done was, kit was done by a registered nurse, a sane nurse at Blessing Hospital, true? Yes. And uh, do you recall when the lineup procedure was done? during that time or around that time when it might have been done? In regards to the sex assault kit? Yes. I don't. And uh, you also, later on, I believe sometime in the early hours, went to the hospital and collected this sex assault kit, true? Yes. And uh, do you remember what time that was? Again, early morning hours on the 10th. What did you then do with the kit? Logged it into evidence. And when you say locked it into evidence, what does that entail? I put the information into our evidence system and put it away into a locked place. Such as a locker with a padlock? Into our evidence storage. And uh, was that enclosed in a bag? A bag? Yes. No. Um, it's simply a box. Correct. And that box was taped up? Yes. And uh, do you recall what else was included with this sex assault kit? I only received the box and any pertinent paperwork that the SANE nurse gives me. You did not receive a navy blue blouse? That is all within the kit. What uh, the SANE nurse does with certain items is not to my knowledge. I just simply collect the kit. Speaking on that um, navy blue blouse, do you have any recollection of the navy blue blouse being sent back to the agency here before the sex assault kit was? Objection, Your Honor. I don't know that this witness has ever testified about a navy blue blouse. She said she received a box from the same nurse, and she doesn't know what was in the box. I'm going to overrule the objection. The objection was if this witness had any knowledge of a navy blue blouse being sent back to the agency prior to the sexual assault kit box. So you may answer the question. Meaning, was it sent back? Let me answer the question. I've overruled the objection. I'm sorry, what's the question? Uh, do you have any knowledge as to was the, let me rephrase that, uh, was the navy blue blouse sent back to the agency of Adams County before the box was? I believe everything would have been collected at the same time if it was on her person. And uh, there are to be some pants that uh, CL wore to the hospital that we've previous, previously clarified that were not sent there. Um, did you see the pants that CL wore to the hospital? I don't recall. And uh, uh, is there documentation paperwork that is included with the sex assault kit? The same nurse gives me everything that they typically give me, and that includes paperwork. But the paperwork does not always stay with the box, does it? I'm not sure, I guess, what you're asking. It, well, there's, there's a thing called sexual assault documentation forensics, or forensic documentation. It's a kit that, of documentation that explains everything that happened, the claims placed forth, how they happened, the diagram of the body, and such. It's something that deputies would have to review, correct? Yes, I reviewed that paperwork. And, uh, In this documentation, were there pictures? I don't recall. Uh, is it normal? 
procedure to send pictures of an abused person? Are you asking photos that were taken during the sexual assault? Yes. I didn't know. That does not go with me. Um, after retrieving that and storing it in a locker, what did you further proceed to do in regards to this case? At one point, I went back to the scene. And that was approximately what time? Again, I would have to look at my dispatch ticket here. I believe that would have been around 2.48 a.m. And what did you do at the scene at the time? I went and checked on the status of the crime scene technician to see how far along they were doing, or how far along they were, how everybody was doing, um, checking in with them. And uh, did you enter the home at that time? I took maybe three steps into the home. I asked the crime technician if she was done processing that area, and she was. Um, after checking in with the, the deputy and the crime scene technician, I walked out of the house. There's no need for me to be in there. And uh, in reference to being done with that crime scene, uh, being done, would that mean the collection of evidence? And Are you asking about when I said I was waiting for it to, to being done processed in that area? Well, you stated that the crime scene technician stated that she was done, correct? In the area that I was asking to step into. Okay, thank you. I apologize. Uh, I'll talk about jewelry. The next day, excuse me, I apologize. Let me re reverse. Uh, the next day, upon concluding your interview with CL, you collected what's called a buckle swab from several individuals, a DNA swab. Uh, could you relay who them individuals were? Uh, Timothy Schmidt, her daughter Heidi, and her daughter Ilsa. And uh, then not too long after that, you got a call about suspects being apprehended in Springfield. Correct. And uh, after that, you proceeded, obviously, to Springfield with three of your co-workers, other deputies? Investigators, yes. Investigators, yes. Apologize. And uh, who was your riding accomplice? Investigator Shoney. Investigator Shoney. And uh, would you relay to us what you did upon arriving to Springfield? I met, I went to the Springfield Police Department, uh, met with some of their detectives there, and then interviewed several people. And in them interviews, who were the persons you interviewed? Uh, Randall, Timothy, and I believe a Rodney. And uh, sometime this afternoon, you took photos of things that were seized or <coughs> particularly found on the defendants. Can you, can you ask that? Sometime during this afternoon, approximately, I believe, 5.42 p.m., <coughs> you took pictures of items that were found on defendants, correct? Yourself and Karen Blackledge, is that what you're asking? Yes. yes. And uh, there were items that were worn or taken on the person to the police department, correct? That was the information I was relayed, yes. And uh, could you relay them items to us? Not without looking at my report or a photograph. Uh, Your Honor, uh, if I may, I'd like to admit exhibits to Ms. Kelsey Miller. The bailiff to carry exhibits to the witness, please? Yes, sir. I just want to make sure it's What's appropriate. What, what numbers are we showing her? They would be 29, 30, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, and 38. All right. So if the bailiff could, the state observe those. First, and then we'll get those to the witness.
recognize them photos? Yeah. And uh, you took them photos, correct? I did. And uh, would you tell us a bit about that procedure and how it's done when you collect items and take photos of them? When you inventory, I should say. I mean, I, I do what you just said. I collect the items and I take a photograph of it. But you, you, let me, let me be specific. You, for example, in this situation, the items were put into bags, brown bags specifically, correct? Yes. And with names on them brown bags for whose property they were. It appears that way. And uh, when you conduct your, your services, when you take pictures, you do not take all the bags out and just dump them together, do you? No. You would take them out one at a time, true? I would put the person's belonging in one area that's all with that person and take a photo of it and then move on to the next. And uh, upon arriving, to the defendant's property had already been bagged or? I don't recall. Yeah. But it was separate from the other defendants? I'm sure it was, yes. And uh, by looking at them pictures, can you relate to me what was in exhibit 26 and 27? As, in reference to cards, credit cards, debit cards. I don't know that would if be this witness has exhibits 26 and 27, she has 29, 30, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, and 38. Do you want her to be given 26 and 27? I apologize, Your Honor. I, I, should have, I think I thought I mentioned 26 and 27. All right. Clerk has those if the bailiff would provide defendants exhibits 26 and 27 to the witness also. Your Honor, again, I am wrong. Uh, then we're not, they, the 26 and 27 were on the defendant's personal property still after the, the property was, the other property was seized in the bag, so I'll keep 26 and 27 with her for further issues. Um, in reference to 29 and 30, could you tell us what's in that property as far as cards? PayPal cards, net spend, a Visa card, easy card, link card, different probation officer's number, a room key. And uh, there's no Disney card there, correct? Not that I see. Your Honor, I'd, I'd like to publish them for the jury, please. No objection. We publish defendants' exhibits 29 and 30 for the jury. <clears throat> and uh, this here is a, an accurate description of what you just seen, correct? Looks like that's exhibit 29. It's smaller than exhibit 29. Yes, it is. I, I'm sorry, I zoomed in. And yes, you, that's 29. And then you have 30, which is a close up of the cards. Yeah. And there's no debit card that is a Disney card in there, correct? Not in this property, no. And uh, if you would, you go on to. 31, I, uh, Your Honor, could I have 31? No objection to any of the exhibits. The, the rest of the exhibits, so we can make this a bit quicker. Can I have the rest of the exhibits published to the jury, please? All right, so we have 31, 32. I'm sorry, I've got 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38. 29 and 30, she does not have 31. Are you wanting her to have 31? Your Honor, she should have had 31. Well, the clerk has it, and so if the I, bailiff can deliver yes. 31 to the witness so that she can... Right, I apologize. And she shall have 32 then also. All right, bailiff giving her also 32. Exhibits 31 and 32, ma'am. I do. All right, so those exhibits are now with the witness. And the state has no objection to publishing 29 through... 38, is that correct? Yes, sir. 
No, nope. this is the state's question. No, Your Honor, I don't have any. All right, so Mr. Yon, you may publish exhibits 29 through 38. 31, you see a rosary, correct? Yes. And uh, that has been said to be CLs by individuals, correct? I believe so. And the same for 32, the same rosary, just a close up. That's the same rosary, yes. And then you go to 33, and I, I apologize, but I'm going to compile a few issues into here. Uh, then you proceed on to Karen Blackledge Henderson's bag, correct? Yeah. And these are in order that you took them. Uh, this is exhibit 34. Objection, Your Honor, is he asking that question? Is he asking if these photos are taken in the exhibit that are taking in the order that she took them? All right. So I will sustain the objection as it was not a question from the court's hearing of it for the witness. To the best of your memory, are these in the order that you took them in? I don't recall what order I took them in. Uh, but obviously you saw Bradley Yon's property in 30 and 29. Yes. And it holds no Disney card, such as is in 34. Not in that portion of your property, no. Or there, that would be my property again, correct? 35? I, I believe that is what was on your person. And then you have another image, which was not on my person. Uh, your Honor, I'd like to introduce Exhibit 28 to the witness. Judge, I, I'm going to object. He asked the question on Exhibit 36 first about 36 and said it wasn't found on his person. The witness is entitled to answer whether or not it was, in fact, on his person or if she knows if it was on All her person. All right. So are we asking this witness if she knows if Defendant's Exhibit 36, which is yes. on the screen, is the Disney card was on your person? Yes, Your Honor. I'm just really Next trying to get letter, answer that question. on the way. Moving on, please. Apologize. I do not know which property was on your person when you were arrested because I did not arrest you. This was given to me by other law enforcement. And uh, if you go to Exhibit 37, that's the back of the Disney card. Uh, as you see right here to the right, uh, 38 is also a Disney card and a ring. Uh, do you recall 38? Yes. And do you recall where you retrieved them from? I retrieved them from other law enforcement with Springfield Police Department. You're sure? Yes, I did not arrest anybody, so I would not take the property. Uh, I'd like to admit Exhibit 28. You're asking to have the bailiff show the witness your Exhibit 28, Defense Exhibit 28, Mr. Yon? Yes, sir. All right. Bailiff has provided the witness with defense exhibit 28. Could you identify that? Yes, it's an evidence inventory receipt. And that is in your handwriting, correct? It is. And with your signature at the bottom? Correct. Uh, that is a inventory sheet of what one is supposed to have had, is supposed to have on them during an arrest, correct? As it states in my note here, it says items acquired from a search incident to arrest. And, uh, You've previously stated that rosary, to your knowledge, was found on the defendant. And obviously you see right here at the bottom an ID, a paper ID, that I don't have a close-up enough, but it is, is obvious and you're aware that these are the defendant's property, correct? I mean, you're saying that it's your property? You, I am saying that and I'm wondering if you're aware of it. Well, I am now, you're telling me that. Yeah, uh, okay. And uh, on that uh, inventory receipt, uh, Ms. Miller, if you go to the top line, the first item inventory, 
What does that say? Disney Rewards Redemption Card. And that specific item is still in evidence, correct? I believe so. And it is not, excuse me, that's a collection form, inventory form for myself and defendant, true? It's for multiple purposes. But it does not have it. This this property here does not have a Disney card, true? Not in that photo, no. Your Honor, uh, one moment, please. Uh, defendant Jan had some jewelry on his person. True. When you 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 tried to you attempted to to interview myself, defendant, and uh, I had some jewelry on my person. Correct. Are you talking about what you were wearing or what was in the purse? Yeah, what I was wearing. No, what I was wearing during the interview. Yes, you were wearing jewelry during the interview. And uh, you recall that jewelry? Yeah, I believe there were two chains, a watch, and a bracelet. And uh, do you recall taking pictures of that jewelry? Yes. And do you hold them in your hand? I do. Um, are you aware of the fact that persons have come forth and claimed them in the recent months? No. Uh, <clears throat> Had you been given any knowledge that they were mine? I, can you ask that a different way? You, you obviously interviewed people. Were you given knowledge that them were mine okay. by any specific person? So at that point, Your Honor, I'm going to object to hearsay if he's asking for what some other witness told this witness. I mean, whenever some other person allegedly told this one witness, which would be sustained as hearsay. Are the objection sustained? Could I admit this to the witness, Your Honor? If you're asking the bailiff to deliver an please? exhibit to the witness, please identify the exhibit. By it is number. exhibit number 41. All right. So if the bailiff would take exhibit defense exhibit number 41 to the witness, just beyond this process, helps to keep a clear record for the transcript because there's not going to be a video of this shown to an appellate court potentially. Yes, sir. So that's why I'm asking you to follow that procedure. Yes, sir. And why I'm making it a record. So we have a clear record, okay? I'm not just doing it to give you a hard time. Yeah, I understand. But if you follow that procedure, I won't have to keep doing it. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, do you, have you identified that? Yeah. And that would be a portion of your, your uh, report uh, from your supplemental report, right? Correct. And uh, I, I did redact that myself as it's been placed in a in a motion previously, and I'm not enabled to give certain information. Objection, Your Honor. You can ask the question. I'll sustain the objection. Miss Miller, uh, Investigator Miller, what does it say to the top objection, right? Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. It's her report. Well, you'll need to lay that foundation, Mr. Yon, before asking that question. And you, you wrote, you, you typed that report, correct? I didn't type it, but I wrote it. It's or, a different system, but yes, it's my report. Or wrote it. And uh, now that the foundation is laid, could you state what it says to the bottom of the right paragraph? Objection, Your Honor. It contains hearsay. You can pass up the exhibit, please. Your Honor, these are in reference to uh, Mr. Yon. I'm simply reviewing the exhibit at this point so I can determine the last objection. Yes, sir. All right. I can 
sustain the objection as hearsay. <coughs> you lay the foundation for such if you're wanting this witness to testify that it is not a hearsay statement. I'm not going to ask what's stated. Uh, I would like to go back to Exhibit 26 and 27. Okay. And, excuse me. There you have Exhibit 26, correct? Yes. And there you have Exhibit 27. And them are the items that defendant was wearing upon your interviewing and taking pictures of him, correct? Yes. I will get back to this at a later time. And were they the only things that were on defendant's immediate person when you interviewed him? Jewelry wise? Yes. Yes. Okay. To my knowledge, yes. Anything wise. Uh, uh, is there a reason that you labeled Disney Rewards Redemption Card as being in my property? Anything I would have labeled on this would have been the information I was given by the other law enforcement agency. That would be a bit hearsay, would it not? <laughs> um, And you didn't collect that I'm card sorry, was from anybody. answer that question? What is the question? I'll strike that question, Your Honor. Uh, okay. Let's refrain from making such comments in the future, too, Mr. Young. Let's ask the witness question, please. And, uh, you interviewed other persons, such as Karen Blackledge, correct? I did. And did you recover anything from her? Jewelry. And you recovered no card? The exhibit that you just handed me. You recovered that card from Karen Blackledge. Those are the photos of the items that I was relayed, that was relayed to me, was in her possession when she was arrested. Thank you. So, could I ask why you would write? Again, I don't, I don't have an answer for that. That was the information that was given to me from another law enforcement agency. However, you took bags and you took photographs of them. You took photographs of the bags, as you see, and you took them in a and in order, starting with mine. I don't know what order I took them in. I'll, I'll, I'll proceed on somewhere else, Your Honor. Um, your coworkers later performed a search of arrest and found other items, correct? They performed a what? A search of where the, the arrest was. In Springfield? Yes. They executed a search warrant. And uh, they found other jewelry, including a watch and a pen. I believe they did, but I was not present for that. And uh, <coughs> your honor, uh, or excuse me, Deputy Miller, did you do an interview with Christine Lohman? I did. And. Uh, if you would, give me a second. And, uh, Deputy Miller was CL during that interview laughing. At times, yes. And there was an abundance of times, correct? I would not describe it as an abundance, no.
And uh, I want to I want to speak on one one scenario. Kelsey Miller that uh, was presented. I'm, I'm going to object. He can't speak on the scenario. He needs to ask a question. So uh, an objection. Ask the witness the question. Did did CL claim to be sexually assaulted by penis in her mouth while in a moving car at a high rate of speed? Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. I'll sustain the objection. Your Honor, I wish you admit the exhibit to to show this. This is this is ridiculous, and I'm I'm. A, what exhibit are you talking about? Your Honor, it would be exhibit number seventy-seven. It's a car scene. It's it's where CL describes a car scene, and in vivid detail and just. Objection, Your Honor. I just need you to identify the exhibit. Your Honor, yes, sir, Your Honor. There's an objection. Yes, Your Honor. We, we object to the introduction of the video as hearsay. Have the jury step out so we can further discuss the proposed exhibit and objection. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. So, Mr. Yon, so I'm clear on what your defendant's exhibit 77 is. What is that? Your Honor, it's 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 a portion at approximately a few seconds after 37 minutes into a video interview where Who's the video interview of? CL. And by? Kelsey Miller. The very following day, 18 hours later, after a very What's heinous the following crime, day date? That would be November 10th okay. at approximately 12.02 p.m. All right. And so is the state aware of the video? Yes, Your Honor. And so what is the state's objection to introduction or showing this witness the Exhibit 77? Well, two objections. One, it's a portion of the video. It's not the complete video. But two, it's hearsay, Your Honor. It's an out-of-court statement that the defendant is trying to introduce where the declarant in that video is not available for either side to call as a witness. Um, so that would be our, uh, our two objections. All right, so Mr. Yon, are you aware of an exception to the hearsay rule which would allow you to present this hearsay evidence? Your Honor, uh, testimonial evidence obviously is not admissible unless a defendant proceeds to open that door. Your Honor, uh, that door needs opened. All right. Any other basis you have is this interview and exhibit being an exception to the hearsay rule? Your Honor, uh, it's a blatant lies. It's right. uh, That's not a hearsay exception, so any other hearsay exception you're aware of that would make this a admissible exhibit as hearsay? Uh, excited utterance, spot, spontaneous declaration, uh, so this is an excited utterance occurring over 24 hours or well after the incident and her going to the hospital, going home from, or going somewhere after the hospital? Your Honor, uh, so I can't find it as an excited utterance. What's you your other grounds? Been able to let me speak, but. I'm asking for your next ground, sir. Your Honor, uh, the grounds are this is a very serious crime and I don't believe one could recover from a crime within 18 hours and be able to do what this person here is doing on this video. All right, and so even though as you've represented such, that is likewise not an exception to the hearsay rule. Do you wish to propose any further exception to the hearsay rule that would allow me to admit the defendant 77? Your Honor, I'm not aware of any others, but uh... Okay, neither is the court, but if you had something unique, I don't know all the law, and so I'm always willing to learn. Hearsay rule applies both ways. So if the state couldn't admit something because it's hearsay, neither can the defense. And so I'm going to not allow you to introduce the defendant's Exhibit 77 or to play such for the jury or this witness because, again, it is hearsay, the declarant is unavailable, and there's no exception that I can find or that you've cited me to which would allow such. 
So do you have a line of question you want to pursue beyond that with this witness? And if so, we'll bring the jury back in and go down that line. But let's not go back as has occurred earlier today and attempt to have the video brought in. Are you prepared for your next line of press questioning, sir? I'll bring the jury back. Yes, sir. All right. Bill, we have the jury return the jury box. Your Honor, can I place an objection forward at the moment? Before, while we're waiting, it, it shouldn't take. If you can keep the jury out, hold on just a second, please, Mr. Bailiff. What is the objection, Mr. The objection is to, I'm, I'm objecting to the denial of the introducing of this uh, video and would like to preserve it for a later time as there are case law. And I'm not for sure exactly the case laws right now, but there are many that say that videos and whatnot can be introduced at a later time, even though they're testimony, they can be considered uh, excited utterances or not, or spontaneous declarations. There is no time limit on an excited utterance. The court is sticking with its prior ruling as it's not being admissible. And so your objection is noted for the record. Are you ready to proceed? Yes, sir. All right. Now, if we can have the bail bring in the jurors. Objection to defendant 77 on the record outside of the hearing of the jurors and sustains the Excuse state's the objection. We will proceed. The jurors have resumed their seats in the jury box. I apologize because you re repeat that. I didn't hear the beginning of it. Mr. Young, I was putting up record, and so the jurors know that the last objection by the state to Defendant's Exhibit 77 has been sustained. And so we're moving on. Jury is in the jury box. Do you have further questions for this witness, sir? Yes, I do, Your Honor. Uh, when the defendant first arrived to the county jail here, which was on the 15th of November, uh, he attempted to send property home. Are you aware of that? No. Uh, you did not put a hold on defendant's property? I don't recall this. Um, Your Honor, I apologize. I wasn't given the specific information who did. Um, are you aware that the defendant has since released property? No. Defendant recently attempted to suppress what he considers his own items. It, Objection, Your Honor. Any motion to suppress is not relevant for today's purposes. Sustained. Your Honor has reference. Could I present the uh, state's exhibits of gold watches? And uh, I believe they would be here. People seven. People seven and several pieces of jewelry. Is that what you're referring to? No, sir, Mr. There, it would be exhibit 57. That's a picture. And People's 57 is a picture, Your Honor. It's the same picture. Right, so you want a photograph that is People's 57? I, I would request that the photograph and the evidence be prop, brought, excuse me, brought forward. All right, so if we can round up People's Exhibit 57, and then what's the other exhibit, Mr. Young? Uh, that, that's it, Your Honor. Uh, the I'm not sure what the exhibit number was on the item itself i'm not so sure we even saw that item here um but however that exhibit this one here your honor has been used against the defendant today uh, so i would ask that you're 57 if you're yes. up, people's exhibit 57 
Okay, you're willing to witness to see that item? Yes, sir. Okay. So we've got the original People's Exhibit 57 here. Can you hold up and give that to the witness, please? Thank you. Do you recognize that? Yes, it's Exhibit 26 as well. The same as Exhibit 26, Defendant's Exhibit. Um, could we introduce that evidence, physical evidence? I don't believe that piece of physical evidence has been introduced, Your Honor. Do you have it marked as a People's Exhibit, Mr. Jones? I do not, Your Honor. Uh, it's marked. I just gave it to the witness, Your Honor. 57. People's 57 is, Your Honor. That's the photograph. He's asking for the actual... Of ex Exhibit 57. Yes, I am. I'm asking for the actual evidence of Exhibit 57 to be brought forward since it was retrieved from the defendant. in the state's possession, Mr. Jones. I don't know if we have it in court right now, Your Honor. Or, Your Honor, we could potentially go back to Exhibit 41. Let's address this one while we're on it and get it resolved before we move forward with the next item. Because we don't have that in court today. So the watch and bracelet depicted on um, People's Exhibit 57 and Defendant's Exhibit 26, those physical items are not present. Is that correct, Mr. That is Jones? correct, Your Honor. I would make a record that we did ask the defendant that any physical evidence he wanted to be in court, he provide that with to us, and he did not list that as something he wanted in court. So that's why we don't have it. All right. Rules. So let's proceed provide. with the questioning regarding... The exhibits 57 for the people and defendants exhibit 26. Your Honor, is there, is there a chance that we could grab that from the local evidence locker? Is there a chance you didn't ask the state to bring it and make it available before trial today, Mr. Yon? These Your delays Honor, are wasting the court's and jurors' time. They have all the evidence they presented the other day, Your Honor, and uh, it should be there because, well, I, I didn't request any of that evidence either. And uh, the evidence I'm looking for, they say it's not there. They don't Mr. have it. Mr. Jones, Why? how long would it take the state to round up the watch and bracelet? Your Honor, honestly, I don't know. We have one evidence custodian for the sheriff. I don't know if he's working today. I don't know uh, where he is because he's also a road deputy. And so he, he could be out. In the, I just don't know. He's not working today. He's not, right. he's not working today. So if the state had been provided Notice prior to trial today, Mr. Jones would have and Ms. Keck would have had the items as requested, but I'm not delaying the, tra the trial at this point to have those items retrieved. So let's proceed on, Mr. Yon. Yes, Your Honor, I'd like to present exhibit number 44. Defendant's exhibit 44? Yes, sir. Are you wanting that taken by the bailiff to the witness? Yes, sir. All right, simple process. Simply ask the bailiff to take the exhibit to the witness, please. Thanks. And that is Defendant's Exhibit 44. When you're ready with your questions. Ms. Miller, have you ever seen one of them? No. Uh, at the top heading, what does that state? Adams County Sheriff's Office released property receipt. And there are items circled on that. And obviously, you know that the defendant was apprehended wearing a bracelet, a watch, and two necklaces. Then three items, which have a combination of... Objection, Your Honor. Is there a question here? What are the first three items? Can you, can you list them off to us? Read them off to us, please. Sustain the objection. Bracelet, watch, necklace. And what is the amount on them? The amount number? Under quantity? Yes. One, one, two. And that would be two necklaces? That's what it states. One watch and one bracelet. <coughs> Your Honor, uh, I do not have that in digital form for the jury, so I'd ask that it be published to the jury and they'd be able to see it. Any objection? That's fine. 
All right, no objection. If the bailiff would hand the item to juror number 33, and then if the jurors would examine that exhibit and pass it on to the next juror, please. Ms. Miller, uh, if you would, could you tell me the release date on those three items? It is over, I believe, to the right. 7222. 7222? Thank you. Um, I'll proceed further, Your Honor. Uh, Ms. Miller, I want to talk about spray can. Through your investigation, have you ever relayed to anybody that CL was penetrated with a cleaning bottle or aerosol can? Yes. And who did you relay that to? The Illinois State Police Crime Lab. That was not true, was it? That was the information that I had learned at that point. So obviously, information is just freely given, and it's potential that it's not true. That so it's just in this matter. That information was given to me by Karen Blackledge. She said that's what happened. So when I'm calling the state police with a large case, I tell them the details of what's going on so that they know what kind of evidence they're getting. That's common practice. And you, you spoke of Karen Blackledge. I probably should have objected, but I didn't. Uh, Objection, Your Honor. Ask a question, Mr. Young. It's, just based on your interview with, with uh, Karen Blackledge, is Karen Blackledge believable? Are you asking for my opinion? Yes, your professional opinion. Is she believable? I believe the things that she was telling me. You believe the things she was telling you? Um, that interview took quite some time. Officer Miller, uh, <laughs> that interview, in your professional opinion, would you believe her? I believed the things that she told me. Just the things that she told you, you don't believe her as a person? Objection, Your Honor, argument of the witnesses answered the question that was given. Sustain the objection. 
Um, is it safe to say you provided this information to a variety of people? Objection. Vague. What information? Sustained. Um, who all did you provide this information to? Ms. Miller. What information? That CL was penetrated with an aerosol can or a cleaning bottle. That would have been the Illinois State Police Crime Lab and other investigators. Do we still have the people's exhibits? Um, in person, the people's exhibit number 46, the physical item. People's 46 is a picture. And, and do we have a physical item in our presence? That's people's number three, Your Honor. Right, is it present? Are they in the courtroom? Your Honor, I apologize. I didn't receive one of them copies of people's exhibits right there. That is not true, Your Honor. He was given a copy of that, and the court was here when he got a copy of that. And I will confirm for the record that that is what occurred. You apologize, I did. a copy yeah. when the court was provided. Yes, I did. I apologize. Yeah. So please base your statements upon facts rather than allegations when it's inconvenient, Mr. Yes, John. And I would caution you not to continue to do so. Are you wanting this witness to have people's exhibit number three? Yes, I would like. And 46. Well, they're, Your Honor, uh, yes, it, it, okay. if that's how you have to do it. Uh, they're one and the same. One's just a physical item. I'm Which wanting one? to get this witness the exhibit you're wanting her to have. That's why I'm inquiring. So do you want the physical item three as well as the photograph or just the physical item? Both. Okay. So do you have people's exhibit three and 46? The witness has those items. Proceed with your question, please. And uh, people's exhibit three there, are you aware of what that is? Yes, it says it's one metal 409 spray can recovered from the floor of living slash kitchen room. Based on your professional and personal opinion, <coughs> the things you relayed to persons, do you believe it be possible that a person be penetrated with that can? Yes. Outside of pregnancy, dilation, um, <coughs> violently penetrated with something like that and walk away from it? When Karen Blackledge told me that you inserted this into Tina's vagina while she was screaming, yes, I believed her. You, you believe that? You, and you just take anything at face value, correct? I believed her. Uh, how long did it take to get a direct story out of Karen Blackledge? To the best your recollection. I would have to review the interview. I don't know. Um, I want to talk about eye sperms, is sperms, if you may. Um, you can give the exhibits back, please, or you can hold on to them. Are you done with asking this witness about those exhibits? Yes, so yes, Your Honor. can retrieve those, please. Oh, thank you. Uh, can you explain what an ISPERN is? Uh, it's an announcement sent out amongst many law enforcement jurisdictions of any important pertinent information that might need to be relayed to the masses of law enforcement. And that could extend to other states too? I believe it does, but I am not positive where it all goes. And uh, it factually did on the night of 11-9 of 21, correct? I know that Hannibal Police Department knew of our ISPR, and I'm not sure how they knew about that. Um, you stated in your report that not long after you were there, they placed an ISPRN, ISPRN. Do you recall that? Yes. And that would have been the first ISPRN, correct? Right? I did not make the ISPRNs or call dispatch to make the ISPRN, so I don't have any knowledge of the timeline that those were sent out. That was not something that I personally did. But it wouldn't have been two hours later? I don't know. Um, for, an, 
for a 911 call to be made at 6.09 p.m. with information of a vehicle that persons are looking for or would be looking for, is it realistic in your professional opinion that an eye sperm be put out almost two hours later? Yes. Hmm. Even when you know about this stolen vehicle with two suspects in it who allegedly violated this woman in these heinous ways, you would wait two hours to put a isburn out. I'm not sure you understand the procedure that it takes to do that and also obtain proper information while you're investigating a crime. Uh, could you explain that procedure briefly? Well, if the call came in at 6.09 p.m., it takes time for people to arrive on scene. And then after that, it would take time to investigate the crime as far as talk to any potential victims or witnesses to figure out what's going on. Especially in a situation like this, people um, are not of their normal mental capacity. This is a very traumatic thing that would happen to somebody. So that takes a lot of time to figure out exactly what happened and get any statements that we might need. And, and then uh, after that, your honor, she's answering the question. Uh, and then after that, it takes getting the proper law enforcement there, getting everybody spun up on what's going on. And then there are a lot of different tasks that have to be done after getting there in order to solve crime appropriately. So it does take a lot of time. And then after that, once you have all the information, then you have to call dispatch and make sure that they get that and put it in the proper places to get dispersed. And uh, to look for a car, a vehicle, and a license plate to be given in between 6.09 and, say, 6.40 p.m. Would it be reasonable to wait until 7.56 p.m. to place that ice burn? As I just stated, yes. Even when you know what car you're looking for? As I just stated, yes. And are you aware of an HP bot or an HPD Hannibal Police Department body cam footage from around the time of 8 p.m. from an officer Wilt of Hannibal Police Department? Yes, I'm aware that that exists. And have you seen it? I do not believe I've seen it in its entirety, no. Uh, and, uh... That was approximately, do you recall what time that was that HPD spotted this vehicle? I'm not going to guess, so no. Um, uh, Miss Miller, uh, You uh, traveled to Springfield, as you stated earlier, and uh, you took statements from several several individuals, correct? Correct. And uh, then were all individuals found at the arrest scene? True. I believe so, yes. And in reference to Karen Blackledge and her statement. How did she seem during the making of that statement? Which statement? Uh, the one that you were interacting with, you and Officer Shoney, I believe, along with a Springfield detective. Can you clarify which specific statement? That would be the very early morning hours of 11 10 i believe approximately 12 a.m range maybe 11 9 or excuse me apologize 11 10 night approximately 11 p.m to 11 11 at approximately 12 30 a.m yet you're referring to the interview but you asked about a statement so which specific statement are you asking about i'm referring to the interview kelsey miller uh the interview in totality. 
How did Karen Blackledge appear to be? There were, she had various emotions throughout the interview. That's why I'm asking about a specific portion. Was she hysterical? At certain points, she was very upset, yes. Was she lying? Again, I need more specific did you, segment of the interview. Without giving you a specific se segment, do you remember telling her, that's not true, stop lying, that's not true, I know that didn't happen? Yes. And how did you know that didn't happen? Because I had interviewed Christina Lohman prior. And you obviously take anyone's word at face value. Is Objection, that your honor. True? Argumentative. Sustained. Do you take everybody's word at face value? Objection, argumentative. I'll overrule that version of the question. Let me answer. It depends on many, many factors. And uh, are you aware of the claim of being thrown downstairs? By who? CL being thrown downstairs. By who? I don't know. Are you asking if she told me that? Yes. She told me that. She did not expand upon that statement. But she told me that, yes. And uh, Seventy-seven years old, correct, at that time? Yes. And these are all brutal and violent acts, would you say? Yes. Being thrown downstairs, one doesn't do that for a sport. It doesn't happen easily. Would that be safe to assume? I'm, I'm not going to make an assumption. Uh, let me re-ask that. Uh, being thrown downstairs, is that something people do every day? I don't. Uh, is that something that happens to people every day? Maybe to some, not to me. But it, in your professional opinion, it wouldn't be a sport or for play? Being thrown down the stairs would not be a sport, no. So it would be very violent? It could be. And for Based on your professional opinion, your daily observance of life, for a 77-year-old who already has hip replacements and mobility problems to be violently thrown down the stairs, would you expect one to get right back up and be walking around? I don't, I don't know how to answer that question. I'm not sure what you're asking. I'll move on. Um, I want to talk about improper securing of evidence or in Adams County's deputies and law enforcement's eyes, securing of evidence. Objection, Your Honor. Let's ask the witness questions. Do you recall Ms. Blackledge telling you on the night of that interview, 11-10, early morning of 11-11, that items were thrown out at some place, potentially Rock Creek Bridge. I'm not sure that she gave me an exact location, but she told me items had been thrown out, yes. And uh, in your report on page 80 of 84, you state, that on 11-14, Douglas recovered items from under, Deputy Douglas recovered items from under Rock Creek Bridge at Highway 336. This is very similar to the description of where Blackledge told me in the interview that she and Jan threw out some of the items in Lowman's car. Douglas took photos of some of the items which included a glasses case, a snow and ice scraper, a package of always discreet, four in one car emergency tool, blue blanket with snowmen, white and green cooler, pink and gold Christmas ornaments, snow removal tool kit, red coin purse wallet, 
Deputy Douglas stated that he could not fit all of the items in his squad car, so he only collected some of the items, including paperwork relating to Lohman's ownership of the vehicle including the vehicle's insurance card, Illinois registration cards, and several Schottenkirk Toyota maintenance papers. You then go on to state on 11-16, two days later, I went back and collected what else I could find. I collected the snow removal kit and more vehicle information connecting the items to the vehicle several bank transaction receipts. Deputy Miller, uh, bank Judge, transaction Judge, receipts aren't that big. Judge, I'm gonna object at this point. He hasn't finished reading the, the paragraph. If he's gonna read everything, he might as well finish reading it. I will continue. The Avalon's vehicle registration. A gold with a tiny flashlight keychain that said American Builder Supply on it. A Nikon AC adapter slash charger, a county market max card, and the emergency tool kit. Everything else was gone by the time I got there. Photos of all items and where they were found were downloaded into evidence. Would you consider that improper procedure? Which part of that? All of it, Deputy Miller. All of it. You learned of these items on 11 10, 11 11, early, very early morning hours. You learned of where they were because you stated Karen Blackledge told you so. And she was correct. So what she was telling me was the truth. And you waited. It was the truth concerning her version, correct? Her statements knowledge. she told me were the truth. And her knowledge of her knowing that they were there. Uh, you stated on 11 14 of 21, Deputy Douglas recovered items. That's a four day span, Deputy Miller. Yes, it is. This is a very heinous crime, also. Would you agree to that? Yes, I would. You waited to collect evidence in this matter for four days is that true that's true and then you waited two more days to go back and collect items that persons knew were there items so small as this paper right here something that one could sit right on their lap and ride back to the precinct with deputy douglas collected what he could i don't know why he did it that way but he took photos of that i went back as an extra step to ensure that everything that could would get collected Um, and uh, you've handled most of the DNA matters, such as the forms and documents and reports coming back to the agency, correct? Again, this is a team effort. But you've handled a lot of them. I have handled some, yes. Such as correspondence from analysts and reports. I have received reports, yes. And uh, are you aware of any of the reports and recall their findings just based on your remembrance? No, I would have to look at the reports. Um, do you recall that there was, first off, I want to ask you, uh, based on your memory, how many times did CL state that she was penetrated? I would have to look at my report. But it was a numerous amount of times, correct? I believe yes. Do you recall any report for vaginal or two different reports for vaginal and or in, in association with vaginal and oral testing just at this point i'm going to object the expert in dna has already te testified on this this witness testifying on that would be impermissible hearsay 
Care to respond, Mr. Young? Um, Your Honor, she's handled majority of the reports. Um, she, you know, it, it's almost as if people only know certain aspects of this case, and they're generally the aspects that are known are the ones that they had no interaction with. But the ones that they did have interaction with, they do not know about. Um, I'm going to sustain the objection as hearsay if you're asking her to answer questions based upon the information contained in the DNA reports. Those would be the statements of someone other than this witness. So you can introduce them into evidence for the truth of the matter asserted therein. That's classic hearsay. Further questions for this witness? Yes, Your Honor, if you give me one moment, can I introduce a document Are you so that the bailiff to take an exhibit for the witness yes i am your honor Please ask the bailiff if you would uh, take an exhibit to the witness so we don't have to go through this process repeatedly Mr. I'll, I'll try to remember it, your honor All i right. apologize and what exhibit are you referring to i'm going to make this 100 your honor All right. 100 because it is 100 percent correct objection your honor Direct the jury to disregard Mr. Yon's statement and will caution Mr. Yon not to make such statements again in the future. And that is pages. Mr. Yon, again, let the state review your defendant's exhibit number 100 and then we'll move forward from there. I have no objection to the witness seeing it. I want to be clear that's where I have no objection to at this point. All right, so the bailiff will provide the witness with the defendant's exhibit 100. Mr. Yuan, take a moment to review that exhibit. Mr. Jones, do you have an objection to her reading off what the document says? Yay, yes, no. Your Honor, I'm a witness, so I'm not going to answer Mr. Yon's questions. Right, so Do you have any objection to reading off the findings of that Mr. document? Yon, if you'll ask the witness your questions. I, I just did, Your Honor. I apologize. Oh, does she have any objection to reading off of what's on the document? Yes. Okay. Mr. Jones. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. All right. I don't know what you're asking her to read off. Uh, I haven't seen the exhibits. So. Ms. Miller, could you read off the findings? Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Well, you could have handled this a long time ago. I'll take the uh, exhibit back, Your Honor. Return the defendant's exhibit 102, the defendant. Questions for this witness, Mr. Young? Uh, yes, give me one moment. Um, No, Your Honor, I'll rest with this witness. All right, Mr. Jones or Ms. Keck, any cross? Thank you, Your Honor. Briefly, Investigator Miller, you were asked about whether or not you just take people at your word or at their word. Do you remember that question? I do. You're an investigator, is that fair? Yes. And when someone tells you something, do you look for evidence to back up what they tell you? I do. So if someone tells you things were thrown out of the car and things were actually found where they say they were thrown out, would you believe that that person was telling you the truth or telling you a lie? Telling me the truth. And if they told you the truth about one part of an incident, does that help you believe that perhaps they're telling you the truth about other parts of the incident? Yes. Do you also compare that person's statement to other people's statements to see if they correlate or match? 
Yes. And if one person's statements correlate with another person's statements or match, does that give you more confidence that they're telling you the truth? Yes. When someone tells you something occurred to them, do you look for physical evidence of that to determine if they are in fact telling you the truth? I do. For example, things like bruises. Yes. Things like blood. Yes. Things like injuries to their vaginal cavity. Yes. Things like injuries to the inside of their mouth. Yes. Are those Objection, all your honor? Uh, Mr. Jones is throwing an indirect comment to seek hearsay testimony or indirectly get the jurors to hear things that are believed to be true in his matters. Uh, he's trying to seek testimonial evidence, as they say. I'm overruling your objection, Mr. Yon. You opened this door when you asked the witness about her believing and taking people in assessing their credibility. So the objection is overruled. Uh, you answer the question. Your Honor, I object question. again. I, uh, also opened, I also opened the door on a statement that the courts will not let me read. Right. Or, well, Mr. Yon, I've ruled on your objection. Okay, you can't open the door for yourself, but unfortunately, Mr. Jones would have to open such a door and then you would be allowed to walk through. That's how that works. So when you open the door, that means Mr. Jones gets to follow up in cross-examination on that question. So Mr. Jones, if you would conclude your questioning here. Thank you. Uh, injuries to one's mouth. Yes. In your course of being an investigator, have you had the opportunity to talk to multiple victims of sexual assault, sexual trauma? I have. I've investigated a lot of sex crimes. In speaking with those multiple individuals, would it be fair to say that each individual has a different response to the trauma that they suffer as a victim to a crime? Yes, there is no normal response for a victim. Everybody is different. Have you seen victims shut down and refuse to talk? Yes. Have you seen victims of sexual trauma and sexual uh, violence cry uncontrollably? Yes. Un uncontrollably? Yes. Have you seen victims of sexual assault be able to speak with you in a normal voice? Yes. Have you seen victims of sexual trauma and violence laugh about the situation or other incidents during the course of the interview? Yes everybody's response to trauma is different. That's correct. There is a lot of different factors that go into that. A lot of shame, guilt, and um, shock. And again, demeanor is not necessarily the only factor in determining who to believe. That's correct. Thank you, investigator. Mr. John, any questions based upon the cross-examination yeah, questions yes. asked by the people? Yes, I do, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Jones just talked about taking, question Deputy Miller about taking things at face value. Um, Deputy Miller, uh, I'll set an example for you real quick. If me and Mr. David Adam back here take the judge's podium from him, or the items he have he has up there on his podium. Your Honor, I'm going to object at this point. Are we, are we getting to a question? Yes, we are very good. Can ask the question, please, Mr. Young. If a defendant comes forward and says another person was with them, and you have, do you just take that at, that that at face value when they are lying about everything else, or? Lying in general. Again, as I just discussed with Mr. Jones, there are a number of factors that we just covered to determine if somebody is credible or not. And and even if somebody tells one credible piece of evidence or one credible statement, does that mean all their statements included in that totality of statements are true? Again, it's case by case. It's a yes or no many different. Ms. Miller, it's a yes or no answer. Objection, Your Honor, it's not a yes or no answer. <coughs> okay. 
I'll sustain that. You are in redirect, not cross-examination, and so you'll have to ask the open-ended questions, not questions suggesting a yes or no. So if you could rephrase the question and re-ask it. Uh, Your Honor, uh, thank you. Uh, Jones, State's Attorney Jones, asked you the things that people do in reference to being sexual assault victims. They present themselves in many different ways. In this case at hand, Deputy Miller, uh, did a declarant, specifically CL, did she claim while at a high rate of speed on a dark two-lane road. Hearsay. I'll sustain the objection. Did she laugh and tell blatant lies? Objection. Compound question. Did she laugh during Sustained. these matters? Did she laugh during these matters? At times, yes. Quite a bit. True? No. And did she tell any things, anything that can be considered lies or that are lies? Tina? Yes. No. That you're aware of? Not to my knowledge, no. Are you, are you knowledgeable of, are you knowledgeable, and I'm not gonna ask you what was said, are you knowledgeable of the penis and mouth in the car? That you stuck your penis in her mouth? No, that somebody stuck their penis in her mouth. Yes, I have knowledge of that. And that was while driving, correct? That is what Tina told me, yes. And now that the foundation has been laid and the door's open. Um, Objection, laid... Your Honor. Objection, Your Honor. That's not how opening the door works. Also, I object hearsay, and let's move on. We'll sustain the objection again, Mr. Yon. That is not what is meant by opening the door. You can't open the door for yourself and then walk through it. It would be something you bring up that then Mr. Jones is allowed to inquire because you brought it up and vice versa. Yes, sir. Um, Any further questions for this witness? You are aware of that. Objection. That's they, all I have. <laughs> nope. Okay. So Mr. Yon is finished with his question. Any redirect? Or, I'm sorry, recross. Re -cross. Investigator Miller. You believe Christina Loman? I did believe Christina Loman. Victims deserve to be believed. Yes, they do. Nothing else? Any redirect, Mr. Yon, based upon that one question? Um, Deputy Miller, uh, and this is not in reference to Christina Loman. Objection, Your Honor. Christina, excuse me, CL. Around. Beyond the scope if it's not related to Christina Loman. All right. So I'll sustain the objection as being beyond the scope of the question asked on recross. So, Mr. Yon, do you have any questions based upon the question asked on recross examination? Um, the scenario in the car. Objection, Your Honor. That wasn't what my question was about. I will sustain the objection. Mr. Yon, do you have any further questions based upon the one question asked on recross? You already acknowledge that you know of the situation. Objection, Your Honor, beyond the scope of what I asked. Sustained. That's it, Your Honor. All right, enough. Thank you. Any further questions? And Ms. Miller, you are free to go. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. I would reserve to call her at a later time, Your Honor, if possible.
Your Honor, we're asking that she be released from her subpoena. She is not available. She's not under the defense subpoena. We're asking that she be released on the record. She's not available uh, at any point further. If the defense had any future questions, he should have asked them now. This was covered by the court earlier. I am going to release her from the state subpoena, which the, is the only subpoena that she is here under. So, Mr. Yon, if you believe you'll need her back, you'll need to get her subpoenaed as a defense witness. Yes, sir. At this point, we are approaching 4.30 in the afternoon, and I am going to recess court for the weekend. And with our thanks for your patience and attentiveness, but members of the jury, we will now recess for, again, the weekend.